Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 5th grade concept of multiplying decimals. This is standard 5.3e in the great state of Texas and we are using item number 25 of the 2018 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and then we will look at our answers together. So we have an electronic book, has a file size of 2.4 or 2 and 4 tenths megabytes. What is the film, the file size of megabytes of 16 of these electronic books? So what we have here is we're looking for a total file size. So if we're looking at a strip diagram, that's our total. And what we need are we need 16 of these books. So let me see if I can draw 16. I'm going to draw a half. That's going to give me halves. Cut each half and half. That's going to give me fourths. Cut each fourth and half. That's going to give me eighths. Then if I cut each eighth and half, I'm going to get sixteenths. So I've got 16 little boxes here. Every single one of these is going to be 2.4. Now, I don't have the space to write 2.4 into each of these, but as you can see, we're going to get either repeated addition, 2.4 16 times, or we're going to get 2.4 times 16. So 2.4 times 16 is going to be the multiplication problem we are going to look at. There is a way to estimate this, though. And we're going to get a pretty good estimate. I'm going to use compatible numbers. So let's look at that real quick, just to see how close we can get. 2.4. I'm going to say that's really close to 2.5 as a compatible number. You'll see why that's going to be helpful in a moment. And 16, I could round that up to 20. But since we're doing compatible numbers, remember numbers that are just close and easy to multiply, let's do 15. Now let me show you why this is going to work. So 15 times 2.5. So let me flip these around here. And you can see what we're doing. 15 times 2.5. Well, I could break this apart. And I can multiply 15 times 2. And I can add that to 15 times 0.5. That is called the distributive property. And you see I took my 2.5 and I broke it in half because these two are going to be kind of easy. So 15 times 2, well, that's going to be just double 15. That's 30. And 15 times 0 0.5. So I need to take, remember, this is half. So I need to take half of 15. So most of us can mentally do that. This can be 7.5. 15 times 0.5. 5 is half. That's 7.5. So that gives me an estimate of about 37.5. So I'm thinking D. That's pretty close. But we'll see. A and C aren't too far off. I can go ahead and tell you B is not right. Way too large. Well, let's see what the actual multiplication looks like. What we do is we ignore this decimal. We just pretend it's 24 times 16. We'll bring that decimal back at the end, but just multiply like normal. 6 times 4 is 24, carry the 2, 6 times 2 is 12, add that 2 back in, there's your 144, Let's see, put our 0 there, 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 2 is 2, so we add this like normal, that's 4, that's 8, that's 3, now it looks like I've got 384, which is kind of like my D, but you notice the decimal's in the wrong spot. This is where our decimal comes back in. Remember this was 2.4, or 2 and 4 tenths. When you multiply decimals, you don't worry about lining them up. You simply multiply like normal. When you get to the product, which we have 384, you check to see how many digits are behind the decimal in all the factors. So, I've got one digit behind the decimal here. I don't have any digits behind the decimal in 16 because it would be 16.0. There's nothing back there. So I've got one digit behind the decimal in my factors. So I need to bring my decimal in one spot. So there's one digit behind the decimal. My answer is D.